management principles from the Bible. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalm chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Psalm chapter 24 verse 1 The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Psalm chapter 37 verse 21 Blessed is he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Psalm chapter 41 verse 1 Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Psalm chapter 62 verse 10 Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Psalm chapter 82 verse 3 Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 Go to the end, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Proverbs chapter 6 verses 6 to 11. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 28. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 24. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Proverbs chapter 13 verses 4, 7, and 11. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 21. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 9. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Proverbs chapter 20, verses 4 and 13. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 9 Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are shooters for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Proverbs chapter 22 verses 26 to 27 Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. 
Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 4 to 5. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw, and considered it well. I looked upon it, and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 30 to 34. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. For riches are not for ever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. The hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, for the maintenance for thy maidens. Proverbs chapter 27 verses 23 to 27. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eye shall have many a curse. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 27. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 9. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10 Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verses 1 to 2 and 6 Learn to do well, seek judgment, believe the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Matthew chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. 
sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Matthew chapter 6 verses 24 to 34. They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Matthew chapter 22 verse 21. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dig in the earth, and hid his lord's money. After a long time the lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said to him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 30. For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mark chapter 8 verses 36 to 37 Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Mark chapter 10 verse 24 And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Luke chapter 12 verses 15 to 21. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Luke chapter 12 verses 33 to 34. For which of you, intending to build a tower, seateth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid a foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, seateth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace? So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Luke chapter 14, verses 28-33 when Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread, that this may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. John chapter 6 verses 5 to 14. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Acts chapter 4 verse 32. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Romans chapter 13 verse 7. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 Let all things be done decently and in order. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28 Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. First Timothy chapter six verses six to eight. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. Give alms of thy substance, and when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious, neither turn thy face from any poor, and the face of God shall not be turned away from thee. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. If thou have bought a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity, because that alms do deliver from death, 
and suffereth not to come into darkness. For alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. Tobit chapter 4 verses 7 to 11. Let not the wages of any man which hath wrought for thee tarry with thee, but give him it out of hand. For if thou serve God, he will also repay thee. Be circumspect, my son, in all things thou doest, and be wise in all thy conversation. Give of thy bread to the hungry, and of thy garments to them that are naked. And according to thine abundance give alms, and let not thine eye be envious when thou givest alms. Toby chapter 4, verses 14 and 16. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold, for alms that deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. Toby chapter 12 verses 8 to 9. Be not faint-hearted when thou makest thy prayer, and neglect not to give alms. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 10. Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which the Most High hath ordained. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 15. Fear the Lord, and honor the priest, and give him his portion, as it is commanded thee, the first fruits, and the trespass offering, and the gift of the shoulders, and the sacrifice of sanctification, and the first fruits of the holy things, whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end, and thou shalt never do amiss. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 31 and 36. Be steadfast in thy covenant, and be conversant therein, and wax old in thy work. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord, and abide in thy labor. For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make poor men rich. The blessing of the Lord is in the reward of the godly, and suddenly he maketh his blessing flourish. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 20 to 22. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3. The alms of a man is as a signet with him, and he will keep the good deeds of man as the apple of the eye, and give repentance to his sons and daughters. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 22. Lose thy money for thy brother and thy friend, and let it not rust under a stone to be lost. Lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. Shut up alms in the storehouses, and it shall deliver thee from all affliction. It shall fight for thee against thine enemies better than a mighty shield and strong spear. Ecclesiastes chapter 29, verses 10 to 13. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. He that requiteth a good turn offereth fine flour. And he that giveth alms sacrificeth praise. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord and to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord, for all these things are to be done because of the commandment. The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat, and the sweet savor thereof is before the Most High. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Give the Lord his honor with a good eye, and diminish not the firstfruits of thine hands. Know thy gifts show a cheerful countenance, and dedicate thy tithes with gladness. Give unto the Most High according as he hath enriched thee, and as thou hast gotten, give with a cheerful eye. For the Lord recompenseth, and will give thee seven times as much. Ecclesiastes chapter 35, verses 1 to 11. Brethren and help are against time of trouble, but alms shall deliver more than them both. Ecclesiastes chapter 40, verse 24. Deliver all things in number and weight, and put all in writing that thou givest out or receivest in. Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 7 The blessed and ever-glorious Virgin Mary, sprung from the royal race and family of David, was born in the city of Nazareth and educated at Jerusalem in the temple of the Lord. Her father's name was Joachim and her mother's Anna. The family of her father was of Galilee in the city of Nazareth. The family of her mother was of Bethlehem. Their lives were plain and right in the sight of the Lord, pious and faultless before men. For they divided all their substance into three parts, one of which they devoted to the temple and officers of the temple. 
another they distributed among strangers and persons in poor circumstances, and the third they reserved for themselves and the uses of their own family. The Gospel of the Birth of Mary, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And he said unto me, Ye know that ye who are the servants of the Lord live here as in a pilgrimage, for your city is far off from this city. If, therefore, ye know your city in which ye are to dwell, why do ye here buy estates, and provide yourselves with delicacies, and stately buildings, and superfluous houses? For he that provides himself these things in this city does not think of returning to his own city. O foolish and doubtful and wretched man, who understandest not that all these things belong to other men, and are under the power of another. For the Lord of this city saith unto thee, Either obey my laws, or depart out of my city. What therefore shalt thou do, who art subject to a law in thine own city? Canst thou for thy estate, or for any of those things which thou hast provided, deny thy law? But if thou shalt deny it, and wilt afterwards return into thy own city, thou shalt not be received, but shalt be excluded thence. See therefore, that like a man in another country, thou procure no more to thyself than what is necessary and sufficient for thee. And be ready, that when the God or Lord of this city shall drive thee out of it, thou mayest oppose his law, and go into thine own city, where thou mayest with all cheerfulness live according to thine own law with no wrong. Take heed therefore ye that serve God, and have him in your hearts. Work ye the works of God, being mindful both of his commands and of his promises, which he has promised, and be assured that he will make them good unto you if ye shall keep his commandments. Instead, therefore, of the possessions that ye would otherwise purchase, redeem those that are in want from their necessities, as everyone is able. Justify the widows, judge the cause of the fatherless, and spend your riches and your wealth in such works as these. For, for this end has God enriched you, that ye might fulfill this kind of services. It is much better to do this, than to buy lands or houses, because all such things shall perish with this present time. But what ye shall do for the name of the Lord, ye shall find in your city, and shall have joy without sadness or fear. Wherefore, covet not the riches of the heathen, for they are destructive to the servants of God. But trade with your own riches, which ye possess, by which ye may attain unto everlasting joy. Third book of Hermas, chapter 1 verses 1 to 10.